This is the reality. Hello again. Welcome to the reality half hour talk show talking about the reality of life as found in a real relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I'm Dudley Anderson, so good to be with you once again. To remind you that I do appreciate emails very much indeed, drop me a note if you can, dudley at surereality.net. Don't worry if you missed that, I'll be mentioning it again towards the end of today's program. Today on The Reality, we have the Reality Bible Special with Peter Jenkins. Yes, getting into the Word of God and getting God's Word into us. Today we talk about using the bit of faith that you've got. And God has given to every man a measure of faith. It's not incredible. Can faith grow? Can I develop that faith? Well, this is the thing, you see. There were three dimensions of faith that you find in the ministry of Jesus. He couldn't do any miracles in some places because of their unbelief. Then, what did he say to the disciples when they were panicking? Oh, you of little faith. <laughs> but this woman comes to him who touches the hem of his garment. Oh, woman, great is your faith. How do you get from no faith to great faith? Yes. That's the big thing. That's the Use big. the bit of faith you've got. What is faith? How is it involved in our salvation? Where does it come from? How much faith do I need for answered prayer? Peter Jenkins and I discuss these questions and more on today's The Reality Bible Special. Today on The Reality Bible Special, we're going to be talking about faith and our welcome to the studio today, Pastor Peter Jenkins. Thank you for joining us, Peter. Good to have you once again on The Reality Bible Series. This series is getting into the Word of God and getting God's Word into us, looking at Scripture and looking at certain topics that we may find in Scripture. Today I want to talk about one thing, faith. Faith. The Scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. And I've discovered, therefore, Peter, that faith, although I benefit from faith, faith isn't for my pleasure. Faith pleases God. Mm. With respect, God is tickled by our faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. Without faith, we can't even accept God exists. I mean, it's an interesting observation. How do we know how God made the world? I mm. thought about this last week. I've never thought about it before. How do I know how God made the world? Well, I read in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Was there anybody there to witness that? Mm -mm. <laughs> Who actually witnessed it? So we're in a court of law, and we're trying to present, in a court of law, evidence that God created the world, mm. right? Where's your witnesses? Mm. Uh, well, we don't have any. Mm. You don't have any witnesses? No, sir. Well, who wrote it down? Moses. Was he there? <laughs> no, sir. So you're telling me you want me to believe evidence that's been written down by somebody who claims that he wasn't there, so that's, that's like second-hand evidence he wasn't mm. there. No, but you've got to know who told him. Mm. God told him. God told him. And you're claiming that the God who told him how he did it is the God who did it, but nobody was there to witness it. Yes, sir. Mm. How do you believe that is called faith? <laughs> mm. 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 The same God who told Moses how it all began, told John how it's all going to end. Isn't that mm, amazing? Mm, mm. And we believe both by faith. Mm, by faith. Isn't that amazing? Faith is the confidence in <laughs> things hoped for, yeah. says Scripture, and belie believing a certainty of things unseen. The substance of things not substance seen. substance of things unseen. Now, mm. we didn't see the creation, like you've rightly said, um, but that can play out in our lives, in our private lives too. You know, And I'm, I'm praying for a situation in my life Peter Jenkins, uh, it could be a practical need like a healing, mm -hmm. it could be a financial need, uh, it could be an emotional need, uh, but today I don't see it, yet I've got a hope that it'll be as I'm praying, okay? So hope is a prerequisite yes, of faith. Is. What's the connection between hope and faith? I like that because I'm praying for something. We all, we all praying for different things, and right now I'm praying for something, for a member of my family. Some, I want God to really reveal himself in a very special, special way. Come on. And that requires faith, mm. because I don't see right now that prayer being answered, but I know it is being answered. Now, that's the difference. I don't see it being answered. There's no visible external evidence at this moment in time, although as I'm speaking to you, only God knows it could be being answered right now, mm. because that's faith. Mm -hmm. That is the amazing thing. And God has given to every man a measure of faith. 
Isn't that incredible? So whether whether people listening to this program, lady, gentleman, whoever you are, and you're saying, well, I wish I had the faith. You do have the faith mm-hmm. because God has given you the faith. It's what you do with that faith. Can faith grow? Can I develop that faith? Well, this is the thing, you see. There was three dimensions of faith that you find in the ministry of Jesus. He couldn't do any miracles in some places because of their unbelief. Mm-hmm. They had no faith. Mm-hmm. Then, what did he say to the disciples when they were panicking? Oh, you have little faith. So mm. they've got no faith. They had little faith. <laughs> but this woman comes to him who touches the hem of his garment. I've just got to touch it. Oh, woman, great is your faith. How do you get from no faith to great faith? Yes. That's the big thing. That's the Use thing. the bit of faith you've got. Yes. But it also says in Scripture, faith comes by faith comes by hearing and hearing the message of Christ. Absolutely. Now, that, I believe, initially is talking about faith for salvation. There's two kinds of faith, I believe. Peter, there's um, there's uh, faith for salvation. Yes. There's faith for action. Yeah. Okay. Working faith and saving faith. Um, faith for salvation is that faith that we all need and have to have in order to know the grace of God. We're saved by grace through faith. Grace is God's doing. God did it when He sent Jesus to die for us upon the cross. Grace is what God has done for me. Okay, and that is unmerited. It's His choice, and He loves me. Therefore, He in, He He pours His grace out upon me. If I've sinned, I've caused, uh, I've fallen away from God through my sin. If I confess my sin, He's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. That's God's grace, and it's demonstrated through the cross of Jesus. But it's useless, with respect, useless unless I exercise a confidence. In that grace, exactly. which and is faith in grace. I couldn't run a marathon. I could start one, but I couldn't finish one. <laughs> and the only way you're ever going to run a marathon is if you actually start walking first. You've got to start walking, then you begin jogging, then you begin. But if you start where you are, you'll find that what you can do is more tomorrow than it was yesterday. And the day after will be mm. more than it was the day before. Mm. Because as you begin to exercise physically, you're capable of doing more. As you exercise faith... Your faith will grow. Smith Wigglesworth wrote that ever well-known book, Ever Increasing Faith. Mm -hmm. It's a remarkable thing, though, that I knew his daughter. I used to show for her. And she had a terrible stroke. And she was paralyzed all down her one side. This is quite an amazing... I was in my late teens, I guess. And I I would... When they'd come to preach in Wales, I would show for them around. And she, and we'll never forget this, Dudley, but she put her hand on the door and somebody slammed the door and her hand got jammed in the door. But she never felt it because she was so paralysed, there was no feeling, you know. Mm-hmm. And I went away thinking, how, how does this work? Your Smith Wilgersworth, who raised the dead, but his own daughter, is paralysed. It's very difficult to understand that. And I came to the conclusion that some questions, I'll have to leave, wait until I see God. <laughs> because I don't understand them now. We see through a very dark glass. We have limited understanding. I remember a story being told of, of a young boy that was uh, suffered polio, and his pastor was preaching, is God, is God fair? Is God fair, you know? Is God fair when he answers your prayer but doesn't answer my prayer? Is God fair? Is God fair when that person gets healed and this one doesn't get Is God fair? It's a fair question to ask, one we need to ask. And the pastor preached that message, packed church. And he went down to this young man sitting in the wheelchair and he said to him, do you think God is fair? And the congregation held their breath because he couldn't walk, couldn't play football, couldn't swim, couldn't ride a bike, couldn't do anything that any other young guy did. And while everybody held their breath, that young boy in that wheelchair said yes. Mm -hmm. And the Mm -hmm. pastor says, how can you say God is fair? Mm -hmm. He says, because when I see him, He's going to make it up to me. Hallelujah. I love Praise it. Praise God. Yes, absolutely. I love it. We said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and that is faith unto salvation. That's faith. But faith is generated by God's word. And the more I read the word of God, the more my faith will grow because it's written. It's written in the scripture. I can confess it. I can believe it. And it's activated by God's Holy Spirit. The spirit and the word work together. I believe they are synonymous. They're one and the same. We don't have time to get into that. But the spirit of God activates God's word. So when I read it, he brings it alive in my life. Definitely. He actually makes it a reality. Uh, and that generates, it grows my faith so that I can Trust God in every situation. Trust him in my need. Trust him to meet my need because he's faithful. I love this analogy of faith. Imagine 
You're, you're getting onto a great big uh, Airbus um, 380. That's the big one, right? Mm. The big double-decker Airbus aeroplane. Uh, and you climb onto this plane, and you're greeted by the air hostess, and she takes you to, or points you to your seat. You find your seat, you sit down, uh, and then the plane, you hear the engines revving up, and uh, you press back against the seat as it soars forward, and it takes to the air, and it flies in the air, grows to 33,000 feet above the ground. Now, there's somebody controlling that aircraft. He's called the pilot. Mm. I didn't see him. No. I didn't hear him. But I have faith mm. and confidence that he can control that craft and land it again at, at my destination and I can get off safe and sound and having achieved my journey. That's faith in the unseen. It is. And that, I think, is what we have in God. God is invisible. The scripture says God is invisible. We have confidence in an invisible being. I can't see him. I can't smell him. I can't taste him. And uh, generally, I can't hear him. Yes, God does reveal himself like this to some people. But generally, we can't see or touch or feel God. But I have to have faith in him, just the same as having faith in an invisible pilot on an Airbus 380. That's, to me, what faith is, having confidence in God, that he will meet my need, that he will do what his word has said. And we need to get into God's word, that his word lives in us. You know, Peter, Jesus said, when he was talking about um, the uh, the vine, he said, um, uh, I'm the vine and you're the branches, and my father will prune away that which is unfruitful and produce fruit. And then he said, if you abide in me and my words abide, abide. in you, he said, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Well, how could Jesus say that with confidence? Well, he could because he said, if my words abide in you. Mm. In, the, in the New Testament, we read that if we pray according to the will of God, God hears us and answers our prayers. I think it was John who said that by the Spirit of God. So how do I know if I'm praying according to the will of God? That's the big one. By praying according to the Word of God, because yeah, the exactly. Word of God is the will of God. Jesus said, if my words abide in you, you can ask anything. And I will do it for you because you will be asking according to my word. It's important to get God's word into us. It, well, we know that if we don't read the word and anybody that's maybe struggling now in their, in their reading of the word, they will identify with this. But just as you know, when you haven't had any food for a few days, you know spiritually when you haven't been reading the word because you're starving yourself of food. Mm. It's the bread of life. Mm. And... As we don't spend time with the Lord, we, our prayer life suffers, we don't read the word. We don't, if we don't get spiritual food, how are we supposed to grow? It's, it, it isn't rocket science, is it, really? <laughs> if I don't eat for my body, mm -hmm. my body will tell me in mm -hmm. a few days' time, even before that, hey, I'm hungry, you know, mm -hmm. feed me, will you? Mm -hmm. Do something. <laughs> and if we don't get spiritual food, our souls, they be, our souls will tell us. Mm -hmm. We will know that we are suffering. But that's self-inflicted because we mm. can do something about that. Mm. And just as you said, and I really, I really think this is so true, you, you've got faith in that pilot, though you don't know his name, you've never seen him, blah, blah, blah. You look at, you look at, a, at a, a note produced by the Bank of England. It's a £10 note, a £20 note in any currency, really. But it says on the, the governor of the Bank of England promises to pay. Have you ever met the governor of the Bank <laughs> of England? No. <laughs> but you can take that piece of paper... <laughs> That's got a guarantee by somebody you've never met mm -hmm. and you can use it to go and purchase something. Because mm -hmm. the person you give it to, he's never met him either. Mm -hmm. But he believes that that same person that, that neither we've ever met will honour it. That's also authority, isn't it? Because yes. you're going into the shop with the authority of the bank, uh, of the governor of the Bank of England. You have his authority because you have his signature on the exactly. piece of paper. We have God's authority that's in it. his word. Well, that's my point that you, you, you both are trusting someone you've never met to honour what he's written on a piece of paper. Well, we haven't actually seen God, but we have put our trust in the God who's written down in his word, and we put our confidence in what he's written in his word, even though we haven't actually seen him. Amen. This is the God who calls things that are not as though they <laughs> yes, are. He is true to his word. The scripture says he's faithful and he will do it. Peter, we've been talking about faith today on the Reality Bible Special. We're going to take a little break and get back after this. You're listening to The Reality, produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a Sure Reality Vision Partner. To partner with us, please visit the website 
surereality.net and click on Become a Vision Partner. If you've just joined us, a very hearty hello. I'm Dudley Anderson, and you're listening to the program, The Reality. If you're listening up and you have some questions, I'd love to answer those questions and perhaps chat with you by email. Drop me a note, if you will, dudley at surereality.net. Email me, dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y, dudley at surereality.net. Well, today on The Reality, we're featuring The Reality Bible Special with Peter Jenkins. Yes, and from time to time, we just get into the Word of God and discuss some Scripture principles and discuss the Word of God, or perhaps a theme, as we're doing today, talking about faith with Pastor Peter Jenkins. Use the bit of faith that you've got for the glory of God. Peter Jenkins has reminded us that God gives each one of us a measure of faith. I believe that you're born with an element of faith in you. Now, faith can grow as we exercise our faith. It's like a runner who trains for a marathon. The more he trains, the stronger and the fitter he becomes. The more you exercise your faith, the stronger and the fitter your faith becomes. The more you exercise faith, the more faith you will have to exercise. And faith comes by hearing the Word of God. God's Word instills faith in our hearts. Therefore, to grow in faith, we need to get into the Word of God and get the Word of God into us. Read the Bible. I always say, don't rush reading the Bible. You have the rest of your life to read it, so read it for the rest of your life. Now, the Word of God says that by the wounds of Jesus we have been healed, and we need faith for healing. So, let's pick up our chat once again with Pastor Peter Jenkins on the Reality Bible Special as we ask him if we need faith for healing. This is a big question, a really big question. I believe I've been forgiven of all my sins. I believe Christ paid for them on the cross, past, present and future. But I'm still living with sin in my life. I'm not sinless. I do sin less, thank God. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) If I didn't sin less, then which way am I traveling in my life? But I'm not sinless. Yes. One day... I will be free from the presence of sin. That's fantastic. Right mm. now, I thank God I have been set free from the penalty of sin. Mm. And I thank him for that. When it comes to healing, I've seen, I've seen, I have really seen some amazing miracles. I've seen amazing miracles in the Philippines. When I'm going to the Philippines, Dudley, they will be praying four o'clock in the morning for weeks and weeks and weeks for the meetings that God will turn up. Mm. And I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears. I've stood there I'm going to make a confession in unbelief as to what I'm actually seeing. I'm actually asking people, can you go and check out that, you know, this woman comes with a big lump in her stomach, like the tennis ball, mm. and, and I get one of the girls to put her hand on there, and we prayed, and it goes. Mm-hmm. So I said, no, it can't have gone. Like, I mean, mm. <laughs> could you just go and check in that house? That it, it's gone. Wow. Where's it gone? Yes. But she don't care where it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Yes. So I have seen... But at the same time, I've prayed for people that haven't been healed. I have to be honest on that. And and, um, sometimes I don't understand that. Mm. You know, all I believe is this, that in the atonement, Christ dealt with all our sicknesses and all our sins. And one day we will be free of both of them. We will have one day a resurrection body like Mm. his glorious body. Mm. Revelation says, no more pain, no more crying, no more death, no more sickness. Hallelujah. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Mm. So one day we will be free from the power of penalty, presence of sin, as we will be free from all sickness. God now, by his grace, heals people. He doesn't heal everybody. That is a fact. Mm. And we've, I've fasted and prayed. I've got to give one example. A woman in my church was, carrying a baby and they discovered the baby had a hole in the heart Hmm. we fasted and prayed we were we were a young church for a whole week we fasted and prayed and we were convinced god had answered prayer the baby was born with a hole in the heart i couldn't understand it Hmm. i I could not understand that we were convinced we'd fasted we'd prayed we'd done everything we could do then the doctor said that it was the hole in the heart that had saved the baby's life because there were other complications. Hmm. And I learned this, that if God had done exactly what we asked him and only what we asked him, the baby would have died. <laughs> 
He had rosy cheeks and blue eyes. He was just like David in the Bible, because if you read about David, he had ruddy complexion and was handsome. This little boy was handsome. He was about 10 years of age, and I took him with me to preach <laughs> in a big, big meeting, in a big auditorium. And this place was packed with men. And this young boy of 10... God was giving him scriptures. I mean, it was crazy, man. I mean, God was just saying, read this. And you, <laughs> you, where'd you get that from, you know? Oh, I mean, his father was, I wouldn't say cynical, but quite, his father was a very highly intelligent person who struggled with faith, right? Uh -huh. Because of his intelligence. So as his little, as his son is saying, dad, God just told me this. And oh. his, even his dad is opening the Bible. Where did you get that from? Amazing, amazing. We stood in front of that huge congregation of men and David gave his testimony. And I said to those men, you're a boy of 10 that God is speaking to. When was the last time God spoke to you? Hmm. I've never seen so many men respond to an altar call in wow, my life. Praise now, if God, God had done exactly what we asked him to do, <laughs> David would have died. See, because God knows the beginning from the end. Because he's already determined the end. Yes. And then he works towards that, yes. right? He's there. Already. He's already there, man. Yes. He that's is. the beautiful thing. Yes. So Praise nothing's God. a surprise to God. Amen. Yeah. And that's why Psalm 2 said, God sits in heaven and laughs. He thinks the rulers of this world think they're in control. God mm. says, well, mm. look at the mess they make in, right? Mm. He sits in heaven and laughs because mm. everything is actually under the sovereignty of God. Yeah. Even things we don't understand. Faith is confidence in things hoped for. I love that word. And, and confidence is a significant word here because... Um, Sometimes what we're hoping for is not not good for us, as in this case, you know. But God, as we've just said, is already at the end. He knows what's good for us. So we've got to be confident in God's plan and God's purpose for us in our lives. The scripture says, Peter, one of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, I know the plans I have for mm. you, says the Lord. So who knows the plans he has? Mm. God does, God not does. me. I don't know the plans of God. He knows the plans he has for me. Therefore, I've got to seek and track his plans by acknowledging him in all my ways and trusting that he will direct my path. And he's there already meeting that need. So the confidence that I have is trust. There's a difference between faith and trust. Yes, there is. Faith gives way to trust. Yeah. Because faith is confidence in what God is going to do. But trust is believing that God has got my good at heart. You know, somebody described levels of faith as we're talking about that. So you could start at the foundation, which is the greatest dimension of faith. Here, let's think about that. So we say we believe God could do anything. Now then, we believe the next step, we would say, is we believe that God can do something specific. God can do anything is actually quite a, a bland expression, isn't it? Because that's not tested, right? No. You know, Mary and Martha believed that Lazarus would be raised at the last day, but they couldn't believe he could be raised today. Mm. They could believe God could bring him back when he's gone to the dust of the earth. But when he's been dead for a few days, God can't bring him back mm. because their faith was being tested. Mm. To say that God's going to raise the dead way off in the future is not testing your faith now. But to say, I believe God could raise this dead man that's right next to me, that's a different dimension of faith. So to believe God can do anything is actually quite a bland expression. To believe God will do something specific is targeted faith. Mm -hmm. Now, to believe God could do something but he doesn't do it is trust. Is trust. Trust me, that's the greatest dimension of faith. To believe God could do it, but for some reason he doesn't do it, that's trust. Trust. Because you know why that happens? Because he knows more than I know. Absolutely. Trust the Lord knows the plan he has for you. Yeah. Trust um, without <laughs> leaning on your own understanding. That's beautiful, you know. It says in the scriptures. And let me say one thing else. On just the, I feel the Lord just dropped in. God says, I know the plans I have for you, not plan. Mm. There's times we all wander off, right? Billy Graham says, if ever you take a wrong turn in the journey of life, you don't have to go right back to the beginning. Just go back to the last place you knew you were right and carry on. Mm. <laughs> so if I take a wrong turning off the motorway, I don't have to go all the way back home. Just get back on the motorway <laughs> yes, go back and carry on. You. Yes. So God says, I know the plans I have for you. So he says, Peter Jenkins, I know you. And I know you are going to wander off a bit, right? But I've got a special Holy Ghost sat-nav that will get you back on target because <laughs> I've got plans for you mm. because I know what I've determined for your end. Mm. And by 
by grace, God says, by my grace, I'm going to get you where I want Amen. you to go. Amen. I th- Amen. I'm so glad he's got plans and not just a Praise plan, because I'd have blown the plan a long time ago. Absolutely. But his plans are to get me where he's determined he wants me. And by God's grace. That's what I want. Amen. And again, going back to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your, and in the English translation, it's translated simply as peace. Yeah. But it comes from the word shalom. Yeah. Now, shalom, Peter, is more than peace. It is. It is peace and well-being mm. and blessing and and success. Mm. Even some translations may use the word prosperity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what peace is. That's yeah. what shalom it is. is yeah. And it goes on to say, uh, for a future and a hope, because God is already in my future. He's already on the other side of my wall that I'm facing. He's there already. Again, getting back to Scripture, uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 12 that we should fix our eyes on Jesus, mm. the author, perfecter of our faith, who, listen, who for the joy set before him... Endured. endured the cross. There was a wall between Jesus and the joy. It was called the crucifixion. Jesus looked through the crucifixion, saw himself seated at the other hand, on the other side of the crucifixion at the right, right hand of God in glory. When we face our trials and tribulations, when I face disease and illness and COVID in my life, when I face difficulty or I have a motor accident or I'm going through a depression in my life right now, I'm going to look through that because I'm fixing my eyes on Jesus, who is the author. He designs it. He knows the plans he has for me. He's got a plan for me to get through this wall and I'll be seated with him in glory. You know, and Peter, we're talking about healing. I believe God heals. He heals supernaturally, instantly. God heals supernaturally, gradually. Mm. God heals through medication. Thank God for the doctors. God heals through my own body. Mm. I get a cold and I get well. My body heals me. Mm. And listen, for the believer, death is a healing. It is. Through the cross, through the barrier on the other side, Jesus is there. And in him we have healing and we have faith and we have hope. And when we see him, we're going to be like him. And you want to see a miracle? That will be a miracle when Dudley Anderson is like Jesus. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. you got Think that about right. it, you know, because that's just an amazing thing. And then you think, what? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. When I see him, I will be like him. I'll have a body like his glorious body. Thank Isn't Jesus. that an amazing thing? Amen. Not a resurrected body like Lazarus. A resurrection body like Jesus. Amen. Wow. Praise That's God. when the full benefit of the atonement will absolutely be a reality for each one of us. No more sin, no more suffering, no more pain, no more sickness, no more death. Why do we want to stay on this earth another minute? That's why Paul says, if I if I told you just one thing of what I saw when I went into that third <laughs> heaven, you wouldn't want to be here another minute. Yeah. But we are here to bring him glory and to be a channel of blessing in the Amen. lives of others. Praise God. Again, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, it exists. and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Amen. Peter, thank you for joining us today Amen. on the Reality Bible Special. My pleasure. You've been listening to The Reality Bible Special with me, Dudley Anderson, and sharing it today with Pastor Peter Jenkins. And we've been talking about faith. If you have some questions, or perhaps you would like some prayer or some advice, we'd love to receive an email from you. Please write to me, Dudley, at surereality.net. If you'd like to make contact with Pastor Peter, again, write to me, Dudley, at surereality.net. We'd love to hear from you. The Reality is produced by a listener-supported radio ministry called Sure Reality. With your help, financially and through prayer, we can produce these radio programs to impact lives around the world, changing lives for the good for good. You can be a part of that by becoming a vision partner with Sure Reality. Please visit our website, surereality.net, and click on Become a Vision Partner. From me, Dudley Anderson, to you, as always, keep your eyes on Jesus and keep walking in the reality of Christ. (laughs) 